Um, I prepare a quick video for you guys. Um, of course, I'm a Google Glass developer. I enjoy working with Google Glass. Uh, I think that this kind of technology is basically the way of the future. And um, I wanted to create a video to convey what I want to show you in this presentation. So I'm going to show you the video first, and then um, I'm going to explain to you what I'm, I am doing in my master's as my as my, as my master's project and as a part-time hobby. Right now, we're not 100% at that point. We're getting there, we're getting down close. Uh, the Google Glass is already capable of recognizing physical objects. Uh, there is actually this application, it's not official from Google. Uh, it's not in the Glassware store, which is the Android store or the Apple store. Um, it, it's, it's not available yet, um, and probably they're not gonna make it, but you can install it as a third party um, software, and it basically recognizes faces from people and allows you to access the web and see uh, an image comparison from the social media profile so you can get a picture of who you're talking with. So you forget a name, it literally pops the name right into your face. So what I wanted to show you is how this kind of technology, because it's not, if you really think about it, it's not really that different than having a phone. But what makes it different is the fact that it's very integrated into your life. And it's a second layer of reality of your life. Because literally, you can have real-time information popping into your screen, into your eyes, and making decisions. And that's what I wanted to show you right now, uh, what I wanted to show you with this presentation. How you can use data, specifically big data, to make decisions, to make valid, scientifically accurate, predictable decisions. Can you hear me? You were still able to hear me, right? I don't have to repeat it. <laughs> okay. Uh, okay. <laughs> Okay, <laughs> so basically the, the point of this presentation is to show you how you can make predictions based on data that is already available. One of my projects is called the RGB Data Project, which is, if you go to rgbdata.com, what I'm trying to do is compile the sentiment of the valley. 
compile what if what are people doing acting what are they saying in social media what are they reading what are they tweeting what are they liking on facebook um, so we can get a better picture of who lives here and what can we do with people from the valley so what i'm talking about is called predictive modeling you use big data to pre make predictions and use google glasses to display those predictions, to display that information, you see the, the, the little graph at the end of, the, of my video, to display those predictions so you can get a better idea of where you are uh, and, and you can get a better idea of what's going on during your community. When I was uh, watching this documentary about this particular kind of predictive uh, algorithm for big data, um, basically cops in LA are using this computer to see where crime is most likely to occur. So they can actually predict where crime is going to pop out. And with an incredible degree of accuracy, some, somewhere around the high 90s. Um, so you can actually tell if a region is particularly troublesome or not. Now, my point is not so much for law enforcement. My point is for us to be aware of what's going on in our surroundings. If I'm able to walk into a place and I see that there's a high probability that a crime occurs within my area, I want to see it. I want to know it, and I want to get out of there fast. Not only that, maybe um, I'm a marketer, and I need to really understand what people are tweeting about right now, or what are they liking at this precise instant in Facebook. Right now, we don't have a very solid model to know what people in the RGB are doing, are saying, are liking. So. What I'm doing with rgbdata.com is I'm compiling public data sources. Uh, I have a spider in my servers going out and crawling uh, the catch version of the monitor, the catch version of Town Crier, um, the, the RGB Guardian, the, the major publications. And then it's comparing the social activity around those articles. And it's giving, you, giving me a, a, an ability to, to put it all together and see what people are saying, what are they liking, and what's going on within our community. What, uh, if a group of people is particularly talking about a specific product or service, I want to know more about that. So uh, this is RGB data. If you want to become part of it, I actually encourage you. Big data is, is a new trend in science, in information technology, that allows you to to understand the world that is going on around you. You don't need a university degree. If you want to join the RGB data project um, and, and, and you don't have the academic background in statistics or data analysis, I highly encourage you to take this um, Coursera course. If you want to earn the certificate from the John Hopkins uh, University, you can. It's $500. If not, that's OK. You can still take the, course, the courses. You can still take the classes, and, and it gets you introduced to the model of data science, um, which is very, very interesting because you can make very accurate predictions um, based on big data, based on big trends. Now, I'm working with the Office of Graduate Studies right now, and what I'm showing you here, it's a graph of the visits that we have to our website uh, and the number of applications that we get um, per um, per term, per day, actually. So this is a, a, a almost a one-to-one -one correlation. So based on this data, and this big data, because it was a very large chunk of information, I was able to cre create a very small predictive model that tells me um, that whenever I see a spike in website traffic to our website, I can expect an increase in applications. Um, like then it's, it's this precise number, then you multiply it, um, and it gives you to have an incredible degree of accuracy, the applications that are going on um, in in in, uh, in through our system. So data is it's 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 all around us. Data is it's what you're eating to lose weight. It's what you're watching that actually increases your brain activity or may not. How you're feeling, your emotions are data. Your thoughts are data. Everything is data. So data science is just another layer of reality that allows us to understand that data and to make uh, uh, better decisions based on the trends that we see. So hopefully I get you interested in data science and the top layer of that, which is Google Glasses and how you can integrate big data with Google Glasses and the capability of this new technology.
that's, that's something else. I, if you're posting something in a public profile in Facebook and you're conscious about it, then of course anybody can use that information. It's public. But the government, without your specific consent, using that information, it kind of, uh, I don't know, tickles my pickle. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Yes. <laughs> well, uh, right now to help the graduate studies increase their <laughs> the, their enrollment, hopefully create them. Um, uh, an accurate predictive model because we're a regional, prim primarily a regional university. So perhaps understanding people here in the valley to, an, to a level that I don't think it has been done by market analysis or any kind of other tools. Uh, I want to un understand the sentiment of the valley. I want to understand the motivation of the valley. I want to understand everything that there is to know to the valley. So based on that information, help whoever I'm working with at that time. In this case, it's going to be the Office of Graduate Studies. Um, but I don't know if later on I move on, perhaps use that information on, on, on my own to help improve uh, social causes. So for example, maybe we can create a predictive model to, to see how, how, how many uh, donations, we, how much in donations we can get for the food bank um, in, on a particular day, and what's the best way to integrate in the natural biorhythm uh, that is going on in society at that point. Well, my, my, my goal actually with RGB data is to have a creative commons of information, just uh, as much information as we can about the valley so we can know ourselves. I, I, I love that phrase, and it was in the, in the Temple of Delphi. Del Delphos, Delphi, uh, Del Del how do you say in English? Delphi, Temple, no? Delphi, okay. Uh, then it was know thyself. I, I love that phrase. So perhaps making it public for the valley to for us to know in real time what is going on with us at, at a very specific time. I'm using a modified version of Twitter to have like a real time sentiment analysis. So I'm kind of having trouble with that because it's hard to categorize uh, uh, emojicons and, and, and sarcasm and it's kind of, kind of hard to quantify that. Um, but for straightforward emotions, the straightforward messages, um, I'm creating this, this cloud, and it's going to be displayed in real time here, so we can understand what we're saying. That, that, yeah, that, that's a great idea. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I, to, to be honest, I, uh, I would love to have uh, uh, access to, to public health records. Uh, and that way we can create it. My, my main concern is it's right now obesity and diabetes. I think that uh, um, one of the crawlers that I have is crawling the public data that we have here for, for restaurants. And what I'm finding is that we have more Mexican restaurants, uh, on average, than even uh, Laredo. And um, the second city was another city in California that had a very high in in this, uh, yeah, incidence of obesity. So I'm not saying that Mexican restaurants cause obesity, but I'm, I'm, I'm looking at a trend there. Uh, and so, but I need to know, I need to have more direct access to the information of, of what you're doing. And as a matter of fact, what I would love, my, my dream, is that everybody starts carrying one of these, which is a, a, a posture tracking device. Uh, not only it tells you about uh, if, if you're slouching or not, uh, but it also collects information about how much you're walking. It carries information about the routes that you're taking. It carries information. 
that that will be my data orgasm. I mean, to have access to that, it's 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 gonna be it's gonna be incredible. Uh, right now, there is a big data database uh, of all this information, uh, but of course, it's not publicly available. So that's. There was, but I think it's, it's going to die right now with all this Snowden thing and, and people being concerned about privacy and complaining and yeah, so probably not happening that fast. What do you mean? For example, what motivates you uh, right now? A, a particular question that I'm having is what motivates you to go to graduate school, to pursue a master's or a PhD? I mean, and, and I have some initial insight, which is, of course, you want to make money, uh, you want to increase the possibility of being competitive, and, and there's many reasons. But at what precise moment you actually make the decision? Because right now, Here's the thing. You're living a very public life. Well, most people are living a very public life. They're tweeting about what they like, what they ate. Some of them are tweeting at what time they're going to the restroom. We're tweeting about so much. We're talking about in social media about so many things. I want to know the precise strain of thought, the precise trend that you were thinking right before you make the decision of going to graduate school. That's, I, I want to know why you decided. I want to know what were your thoughts right behind uh, that decision of committing to, to a two-year degree, to staying in school two, for two more years and get yourself in debt. So. Mm -hmm. the, I, I'm still analyzing the big chunks of data that we have. Like, what, what, what I already have is the actual information for graduate studies. So for example, here I can know that by day of the week, the day of the week that most people submit their application for graduate school, it's Monday. And then it kind of dies out um, after that. But Monday, everybody wants to submit their application on Monday. Um, well, maybe I can find out what newspapers are saying on Mondays, and then maybe I can find a correlation. Or perhaps I can find out uh, by month alone what are the best months. To, to actually start a marketing campaign. Right now, I'm, I'm, I'm the social media manager uh, for the graduate studies, so I'm, I'm managing their social media accounts. So at what precise moment I should start putting on money to actually reach out to most people because I'm going to have the most results with that campaign. So that kind of information, but to the next level, because this is analyzing information that we have, that is already structured, and it's already set. Uh, what I'm doing with RGB data is analyzing information that is unstructured, information that is just out there in the monitor, in, in the town crier, uh, in a Twitter, in a random Twitter profile. So that's the difference. It's a sentiment analysis. Yeah, because the thing is then, the reason why I'm taking <laughs> this long is because um, uh, here you can even make estimations. Uh, uh, you, you, you need to code. I mean, somebody uh, tweeting about, oh, this is the greatest day of my life, you need to code it. I mean, the, the robot is not automatically going to understand, oh, he's happy. No, you need to actually input that into the system. So that's what's taking me the longest time. Yes?
I mean, it's a downside of, of technology in general. I mean, I, I mean, y yes, you can make the case that yeah, I mean, we're depending too much on technology, but that again, you need that technology to continue the progress. You cannot slow down pro progress out of fear of uh, not having it in the future. Uh, the, 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 the perhaps the issue that I could find by relying too much on this data is that sometimes, yeah, numbers tell you a lot of things, but sometimes you need to also trust your intuition. So maybe uh, by looking at the trends, I, 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 I know that I shouldn't be posting at a particular time in Facebook, uh, but I just get something and it turns out to be a very successful post and I get a lot of likes, a lot of engagement, and, and, and a lot of uh, uh, click-through rates to, to a website that I'm trying to promote at a particular time. So uh, the downside is that I think that intuition is something very real that works at a parallel system in our brain uh, that we need to trust. And so the issue with data is that sometimes you trust too much in data and you forget about your intuition. So my concern will be, yes, understand the data and be passionate, as I am passionate about the data, but I also understand that your brain still is the smartest computer around. So I don't know if that answers the question. You know, I, I <laughs> technology. Of course, technology will change. Um, uh, yeah, you get heat maps. So yeah, you're right. A, a, a very smart and, and tech savvy <laughs> Robert can can see. Oh, oh, this zone is blue. So maybe I should go there. Um, but the thing is, then I don't really see that happening. Why? Because with enough information, with enough big data, you can make predictions that are beyond an individual instance. Maybe that single criminal deciding to use this trend uh, is gonna cause a disruption, but it's only one instance. So it's not gonna take into account all the other ones. So if we see that more criminals are doing that, well, eventually I guess we will have develop an algorithm for that and we can adapt the technology. But the issue is that you already have the infrastructure, so it's easier to implement. I don't know if that's, I'm sorry? You need to evolve. I mean, no thing is static. Nothing is static. So even the, the collection of data is not static. So you need to continuously be evolving that technology to keep up with human trends. You teach grad school. Mm -hmm. The days for the, app the application deadline for each program are so unique um, that even factoring that out, uh, it's, it's completely different. Literally, I mean, some program directors seem, I don't, I, don't know, I don't know if they're actually doing that, but seem to be like this day. <laughs> because the, the, some of the programs are everywhere. So no, we don't have that, that instance. And these are applications going on, you can see by actual dates, there are applications going on all the time the the in uh, number of applica applications in December 2011. But here you can see that the actual traffic was higher a, a day prior to that. So maybe we can start preparing for that spike. So it's this nice little formula. Thing. Well, right now, nothing, actually, because I have it off, uh, um, and we don't have internet connection. But for example, there was a very bad storm going on on the island a few months ago, and I was in the island. Uh, and so I even before I, uh, I started noticing that the outside was horrible, I just get a pop-up notification saying, uh, be careful, there's a storm going your way. 
And then I started scrolling, uh, and then sure enough, a few minutes later, the storm came and it was a really bad storm. So, so that's kind of the information I want to know. But what I would really would like to know is if there is a high probability of crime going on in a particular region, well, get out of that region. So. This is a specialization. So it's, it's, it's from the Johns Hopkins University. It's free if you just want to take it for the passion of learning. And Coursera has amazing courses. I highly encourage you to take some of those classes. Some of the best universities around are putting courses for free in Coursera just for the love of learning. Um, but this an, uh, is a certification. I'm actually taking this certification. Um, so I, 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 I already took the first part. I loved it. Um, and so I'm taking the, the second part. It's like in modules. So it's like an online class. And it's uh, $500 in total for the total certification. And it's about half a year to finish. It's fully online. 